person has very little possibility of having any influence, of making his opinion felt in the decision making. And I think that in itself leads to a good deal of political lethargy and stupidity. It is true that one has to think first and then to act. But it's also true that if one has no possibility of acting, one thinking kind of becomes empty and stupid. Let's talk about the man in relation to his love, his marriage. Well, I would say love is something everybody talks about. And the need for love is one of the most basic needs of man, namely the experience of union with another being, of becoming one with another being. And yet I would say that love today is a relatively rare phenomenon, that we have a great deal of sentimentality, we have a great deal of illusion about love, namely as, a, an, uh, as something one falls in, but the question is that one cannot fall in love really, one has to be in love and that means that loving becomes and the ability to love becomes one of the most important things in life. Why is it so difficult for us to be in love as human beings? What is wrong with us as you see it? Because we are concerned with things, we are concerned with success, we are concerned with money, we are concerned with instrumentalities. And the most important things we talk about on Sundays are things to which we pay very little attention. Uh, love is not easy. Uh, all great religions postulate love as one of the greatest accomplishments. If it were that easy, or as easy as most people think, certainly the great religious leaders would have been rather naive. Well, you mention what we think about or what we talk about anyway on Sundays. What about man in relationship to his religion? Well, I think here we find the same phenomenon. We have a religious renaissance today in America, yeah. as many people say. I would say this religious renaissance, 90% uh, of it, is the greatest danger true religious experience has ever been confronted with. Why? Because uh, what is attempted in this so-called religious renaissance is kind of a mixture between uh, Dale Carnegie, how to win friends and be successful, and the norms of the Bible, of the Old and the New Testament, and in a kind of clever and sometimes not so clever way. People try to combine the two. Well, that is actually very much the contrary of the spirit of our true religious tradition. I could put it in another way, Mr. Wallace, I could say this. Uh, men today being concerned with production and consumption as ends of themselves has very little energy time to devote himself to the true religious experience so oh, what so, when you say the true religious experience what do you mean by that Doc? i mean by that the capacity to feel deep love deep oneness with my fellow man with nature and if i were religious in the uh, conventional sense, I would say, with God. But it doesn't matter whether one uses God or doesn't. Mm -hmm. What matters is which experience a person has. The picture that you draw is of a society, and we're talking now basically of Western society, of American society. The picture that you draw is a very dismal one. Now, one of our main concerns <laughs> Let me differentiate. One, of course, our, our, our main concern as human beings, certainly in this part of the world, is to survive and to stay free and to realize ourselves. How does all that you've said affect our ability to survive and to stay free in this world that is now in crisis? Well, I think you touch upon a very important point here. Namely, we must make a decision of values. If our supreme value is the development of the Western tradition of a man for whom the highest thing in life is man, for whom love for man, respect for man, and the dignity of man are supreme values, then we cannot ask the question in the sense, if it is better for our survival, might we drop these values? If these are supreme values, and then, then they are there, 
and whether we live and we die, we shall not change these values. But if we begin to say, well, maybe we can cope better with the Russians if we also transform ourselves into a managed society. If we, uh, as somebody put it the other day, train our soldiers to be like the Turks who have fought so bravely in Korea. If we are willing to change our whole way of life for the sake of so-called survival, then I think we do exactly that which threatens our survival. Because our vitality, as a vitality of each nation, rests on the sincerity and depth of the faith in the ideals which it announces or pronounces. I think our danger is that we talk one thing and we feel and act another thing. How do you mean? I mean, we talk about equality, about happiness, about freedom, and about the spiritual values of religion and about God. And in our daily life, we act on principles which are different and partly contradictory. All right, if I may ask you now to define. You mentioned equality, <coughs> happiness, and freedom. Well, I'll try. Uh, by equality, one once understood the equality in the very same sense in which the Bible speaks of equality. That we are all equal in as much as we are created in the image of God. Or if I don't use the theological language, that we are all equal in the sense that no man must mean, must be <coughs> the means for the purposes of another man. But each individual is an end in himself. Today, we talk a lot about equality, but I think what most people mean by it is sameness. That everybody is the same. And they are afraid if they are not the same, they are not equal. And happiness. Well, happiness is a very proud word of our whole cultural heritage. I think if you ask what people really mean by happiness today, it is the experience of unlimited consumption. The kind of thing uh, Mr. Huxley has described in The Brave New World. Mm -hmm. I think if you would ask people what their concept of heaven is, and if they were honest, they would say, it's a kind of big department store with new things every week and enough money to buy everything new. Happiness today, I think, is for most people uh, the satisfaction of the eternal suckling to drink in more this, that, and the other. And what should happiness be? Happiness should be uh, something which results from the creative, genuine, intense relatedness, awareness, responsiveness to everything in life, to man, to nature. Happiness does not exclude sadness. If a person responds to life, he's sometimes happy and sometimes sad. What matters is he responds. And the third, was it democracy or freedom? Well, uh, it's, uh, all these words, uh, words are used now uh, rather indiscriminately. I would say democracy once meant uh, organization of society in the state in which the individual citizen is, feels responsible and acts responsibly and participates in decision making. I think what democracy means today in reality is to a large extent manipulated consent, not forced consent, manipulated consent and manipulated more and more with the help of Madison Avenue. Well now, now that we have stated the indictment, tell me how did we get this way? What happened to us? Where did we get off the track, Dr. Frau? I think we got off the track, as many societies do, who follow successfully one aim and yet are not capable of seeing at what point the pursuit of this aim prevents them from following a more total aim. That is to say, they get into a blind alley. I think, to be specific, we got off the track when we concentrated more and more on production of things. Thereby, we created a split between intellect and emotion. Because